Hello, welcome to Community News. George is my big brother. JB is my big brother. Asari is my brother. The beautiful thing is this, Honorable Chair. We've been together for far long. And my brother George, you know, his, his wife, since I joined the police today, I call her my mom. And that will never change. And Jimmy, my brother, my kid brother, when I became the Inspector General of Police, I call you and offer you the position of Director Cybercrime. My brother Asari has already gone through the whole process at various places. And by the time I came, he was still at the position of where he is today. We will not have records to ask where precisely he wants to be. And this is how I have coexisted with all of them. And as you can see from behind, all my management teams are here. Because that is how we do our things. Then, all of a sudden, this matter came up. And the matter was about finding out what has happened and who said what and where it came from. And my brothers were given opportunity to come and speak. And they did speak and made indication that, yes, they are involved in what was happening. Then all of a sudden, instead of them to focus on that, they came out with wild allegations. Honorable Chair, with wild allegations that touch my person, the police leadership that I lead, and the entirety of the police service. Without, until today that I'm being told that now they have some evidence, without a shred of evidence, Honorable Chair, at the time that they were making it, without a shred of evidence. And Honorable Chair, those wide allegations without a shred of evidence has brought a lot of pain to myself, my family across the country, and especially my wife and children. That you are so patriotic because you believe in what you call pan ghanianism where you think that because of your multi-ethnic nature, everybody you see as long as the person is a Ghanaian, is your brother or a sister, mother or father, uncle or aunt. Then the pain also to my command, my leaders, my team that we work together that we all know. And the pain to the thousands of police people who are appreciating the strides that we are making in transforming the organization to be the best institution in the country and a reference point for the rest of the world. They came, made all these allegations in order to cover up probably the shame and sweat of what they got themselves involved in in the first place. And I, an innocent person, focusing on my job, working in concert with my team and all commands across the country to keep the country safe and make it to be at peace for this self. I've been asked to come and answer to these allegations, which are why baseless. And I feel in my spirit that this is just not fair. It is just not fair. Are we killing patriotism? That anybody can just get up, make allegations upon allegations, and people who go across the country at times 48 hours non without sleep, just keeping the country at peace, will be called to come and answer allegations that are unfounded. And that becomes something. Anyway, I'm here. I have no choice. I have no choice and have come. And I say it to the glory of God my maker who sustains me every day. I will speak to the matters as a director. And I'm doing this because of the respect I have for myself, for my family, especially my children.
children and wife, for the office that I occupy, for my brothers and sisters who are sitting behind me, that we have pulled ourselves together in an unprecedented manner in the teamwork to get these things done for this country. And for the respect I have for institutions of state, including the parliament that we are here today. And more importantly, the respect I have for Mr. President and Adranko Bufuadu. For the honor that he has done me for making me the Inspector General of Police to work with my colleagues. And equally more importantly, for the respect I have for the good people of this country. So, honor. IGP Dampare appears before the committee on the 12th of September 2023. Yes, and as you can see on the screen, but <laughs> before I continue, IGP Momoyini Papa, these are the guys that wanted to pull him down. I mean, wanted him to be removed as an IGP. And today, during the sittings, this, this is the time that they were on break. See how he was shaking hands with them, laughing. What no what If it was me, I, I couldn't have done that. Yeah, I mean, who picked another and said, No, if it was me, there's no way I could have done that. That tells you the kind of man that he is. IGP Dampari. Okay, so the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Akufu Dampari, appears before the committee, probing a leak plot to remove him on Tuesday, 20, um, September 12, 2023. He was called to answer questions and allegations that he has accused of. He spent about six hours before the committee together with his lawyer and the three officers who plotted to remove him. So these are the officers who in the league audio plotted to remove him, excluding Bugri Nabu. Bugri Nabu wasn't at the committee on Tuesday, but um, the chairman said on Wednesday, Wednesday 13th, Bugri Nabu too should come and answer questions. So these are the um, offices. Okay. So, during the um, the committee sitting, he was asked. COP Alex Mensa in the previous sitting indicated that he is the worst IGP this country have ever had. So the committee asked, "Is he the worst IGP?" And this is the answer he gave. But you were also accused of being the worst IGP this country has ever had. Well, how did you receive the accusation? And what is your reaction? Yes. Honorable Chair, thank you very much. Honorable Chair, I think Probably my brother wanted to say I'm the best and he missed it. <laughs> because the records are there for everybody to see. The beauty of mankind is that everybody has an opinion and you can express it in any form or shape. But that has not changed the facts. And this is the point, Honorable Chair. Since my colleagues and I and the rest of the commands across the country had the opportunity by the grace of God and with the honor done me by His Excellency the President Nana Adudanko Ekufuado. We committed ourselves to transforming the organization to become the best institution in the country and a reference point for Africa and beyond in a teamwork fashion based on Genesis 1 26. So we've been granted that I'm the worst. Then all of us collectively are the worst, including probably my brother who was serving in that capacity as a member of the team that I led. I lead, I lead. So I think. Okay, so he was also asked 
why he thinks he is not the worst IGP? And this was his answer. Want to be the best in terms of all those who have come before us. And we have a good reason for that. Honorable Chair. And we are there getting on to becoming the best in the history of the country. And I'll explain. The reason why we want to be the best and we are getting to be the best as a police administration under my leadership is that when most of our forebears were there, we were. We saw what they did right and the challenges they faced. So being a graduate of management and leadership and a continuous student of sociology, psychology, and philosophy, it is just clear that when you saw your forebears doing what they were doing and you saw what they were doing right, and you saw the challenges they were facing and have this background and you have the opportunity, you surely should perform better than them. And it's simple. You do what they were doing right, you learn from their mistake and make them better. So if you add them to what they were doing right, there's no way you cannot be better than them. And this is what we are doing. And at the point, maybe I will share with you so many interventions we have put across the country and working in concert with all the other security agencies that has brought us to this level of peace, security, law and order across the country in an unprecedented way. But the next point, Honorable Chair, is the fact that we don't want to be the best in the whole life of the police service, but rather we want those who come after us to be better than us because by the same yardstick, they are watching us in terms of what we are doing, those that we are getting right, and the challenges that we are facing, so that they be able, they will be able to outperform us. And when they do that, then they will also become better than us and all our forebears. And when that happens, we will end up building strong institutions and not having strong men. And this is what we are doing. So, it is not true that my administration is the worst. It can never be. He missed it. He missed it. And with your permission, I will speak to a few of the interventions that we put across. First, your, select, your Honorable Chair, we came in at a time that so many places across the country were engulfed by criminal elements, especially armed robbers all over the place. And now, across all the major highways, you can feel it. In the past, in the past, when you are traveling from Kintampo, Bupe Tamale, you normally have to say your last prayers. What is the situation now? In the past, when you are traveling from Tafo or Simu Begro to Kwau, it was virtually a no-go area. In the past, when you are traveling from Kintampo, Zamrama to Prime, it was a horrific journey. In the past, when you are traveling from Efijasi through Kumau to Robonso to Mamikrobo, you must forget it. In the past, when you are traveling from Bamboy, Bole, Tuna, Tuwa, it's another ball game. In the past, when you are traveling from Takwa to Bogoso, Wasakro Pong, it was a hard scene. In the past, when you are traveling 
from Lungawan of Fin even to Asimfosu, a terrible situation. And from Praso to Nua Dubiase to my big brother's hometown, Bekwai, to Kumasi, it was another thing. I can go on and on and on. And as for Donko Krum, it was a daily thing. We've worked together as a team at all levels of command and across all the security agencies to normalize the situation. You call it the crimes that were happening, residential robberies in all our cities. We've stemmed the tide in a committed way. It is just one. On our chair, with the support of the police council, with discussions, and with the approval of His Excellency the President, we have created seven more new police regions to bring close policing closer to the people of this country. Because our assessment when we came to office, we saw that policing across the country was very minimal, roughly about 47 or there about percent. But with instructions from Mr. President, we've been able to deal in police in, in a manner that has never happened before. And that dovetail into the concept of visibility, where we've demonstrated the presence of policing at all corners of the country through the establishment of 144 regional FPU bases across the country. Currently, the establishment we've been able to roll out 121 of them. And this come with an average of 35 officers, number of motorbikes, a vehicle, to ensure that they are engaging the communities, they are patrolling the highways, and then they are patrolling the communities so that they will have their peace of mind to live their life. On which uh, I can go on and on and on. When we came, we have established Police Emergency Medical Intervention Fund with approval of Mr. President, where 1.6.1 million cities is in there to ensure that every police officer who gets injured in the course of duty can be sent to everywhere in the world to give treatment to the person in order to come on board. Honorable Chair, in the process, as we have seen, with our quest to engage the communities and win their hearts and minds, going across the country with my team, analyze and identify and identify and analyze all their concerns, working on and putting measures in place through special groups in order to ensure that they work and keep them safe. Honorable Chair, we have also worked on the issue of decentralizing so many things that were centralized at the headquarters. The welfare department, counseling department, intelligence unit, processing of certain things, including criminal checks. So we are on the quest of ensuring that at the end of the day, we leave the organization better than we come to find it. So all these interventions, almost about 45 or there about of them, and putting it together, working with the other security agencies, that is what has brought us far in terms of the type of internal security that we enjoy. So would anybody come in to say that you are the West RGP? It's unfounded. It's unfortunate, and I think the best the person could have done, if he has nothing to say, is probably keep quiet and allow the good people of this country to make a determination on us. And Honorable Chair, the final point on this matter is that it is not about Dampari. It's about the police administration. It is not about Dampari. It's about the police administration. The police is not a sole proprietorship. It is an institution with governance and management structures. Dampari is just one of the officers involved in the governance and the management structure. So that is what it is. And we work in concept and make sure that all decisions that we need to take, we take it as a group 
and when it needs to the attention of the police council, we get that as well. But the interesting point is this. As my colleagues will bear us out, or will bear me out, all these decisions, where it matters, we even send it to the, division, the regions, the districts, the divisions, and the stations for them to hold meetings and get their inputs involved. And that's the level of teamwork that we brought to bear on the work that we do. So it isn't about dampering. It is about an institution that we have decided to work together because nobody put a rope on our neck to join the service. And at the end of the day, the service doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to any individual. But once we are there to earn our daily bread in service of the people, we have to find a way of working together. And that is what I have done since I came. And my colleagues are the best witnesses for that. I thank you. Okay. So accusations were labeled against you, which of the effect that you orchestrated the recording of the leak audio. Did you play any role in respect of the leak audio? So that was the next question that was asked, and this is how he answered it. Orchestrated the recording of the leaked audio as IGP I want you to speak directly to this particular accusation did you play any role in respect of the recording of the leaked audio I wish uh, like the chairman asked initially I did not play any role in it okay so now what's your relationship with Burgi Nabu I I can say I might have met him one or twice to the best of my recollection. And the last time I met him, if by my rough calculation, to be more than eight months or thereabout. Special General of Police, your physical contacts may be few. What about your telephone engagements? The telephone engagement is along the same line as the fiscal contact. IG, I think what I'm curious about, the whole world is also curious about. From the preamble you built earlier on before you answered your questions, indicates the witnesses were very good friends to you. At the time of this recording, can you tell this committee the relationship between you and the witnesses? Thank you. The relationship has not changed. It has always been the same. And as you saw when we break, in spite of the fact I'm the Inspector General of Police, he's my big brother. I went to him and shook him, shook his hand, asked him how he's doing, asked him how a person I've always called as a mother is doing, and we have a very quick chat. That is what it is. And at the same thing, even my junior brothers, who I expected them to come to me, I have to walk to them, and also to tell them that it has been a while. And we have a chat. And my own kid brother wants to hug me and I allow him to hug me. So that is how deep and how human-centered I am because it takes other human beings for me to be a complete human being. Okay. So he was also asked, did Bugi Nabu lobby for you before becoming IGP? And this is what he said. Um, 
has Chief Buguru Nabu ever lobbied for you to become or to be appointed Inspector General of Police? Just yes or no. Honorable Chair, the fundamental point is this. I have been in the service for all this long. By the grace of God. Aji, I crave your kind indulgence. Your man is saying just yes, answer yes or no. Was he part of the lobbying team to get you, I mean, appointed as the IG? Yes or no? Honorable Chair. Yes. The answer is no. Okay. So he was also asked, does the IGP determine the outcome of an election? This is how, let's work how he, he answered it. Honorable Chair, I thank you for the question. Honorable Chair, the most important thing is this. Election involves so many stakeholders. And each one has its role. And the police also has its role. An election is a simple matter where each stakeholder play its role and collectively we end up ensuring that it is over and the people then decide who becomes the leaders. So nobody has some supremacy in terms of when it comes to his or an entity or an institution when it comes to its role in ensuring that election passes successfully. As far as I'm concerned, all the stakeholders have to play their role. And the point is that because each role is unique, you cannot even compare to see who one, which one is on top and which one is not. So as far as I'm concerned, all the stakeholders have critical roles to play in ensuring that elections pass successfully. So the upshot of what you are saying is that the IGP cannot determine the outcome of an election. Is that what you are saying? Honorable Chair, that is exactly what it is. Not that what I'm saying. That is what it is. Everybody has a role. Every stakeholder has a role. And then when we all play our roles, the people who have to vote will then determine who becomes the leaders. Thank you. Okay, so last week when um, COP Alex Mensa appeared before the committee, um, he said under the current IGP's watch, the police management board has become dysfunctional. And then he said a lot of things about the board and then the relationship between the board and then the IGP. So today when IGP Dampari appeared before the committee, um, he was asked, has the police management board become dysfunctional under his watch? And this is what he said. I have told this committee that under your watch, the police management board, also known as POMAP, has become dysfunctional. Dysfunctional in the sense that it has become a one-man show. In other words, the IGP does not consult members of POMAP for purposes of reporting to the council. Please say, what's your reaction to this? Honorable Chair, that is false food. And like I've demonstrated to you, and you also refer from my speech, and look at it, you called me, and only me, to appear. All of them, including some of them who are on sick leave, said, what is happening? I will suspend my sick leave and come. Because since you have been in office, you've told us that we are a chain. And the time we break, any time it breaks, is because somebody is retiring, we took that part out 
and connect the chain again. So if anybody sits anywhere to say that you don't consult, then that person is trying to be so mischievous to the level that he doesn't wish the organization well and doesn't wish the country well. This is the point. Every meeting, every major issue, Inspector General of Police. Yes. One dimension of this interrogation which we inform our recommendations is about matters concerning um, the, the setup that you had. So please, you interrogate these matters critically um, in camera. So if you can veer off all the challenges of the service. Uh, the people who protect us should not air uh, their challenges because people should build confidence in the setup. So I crave your kind indulgence that in some of these areas of police and what you might be going through and unity and disunity will be better addressed in camera. Yes. Honorable Chair, I am answering a question about what is out there in the public. Mm. The person is saying that I don't do what I'm supposed to do with the team. Yes. And I'm answering to it and the witnesses to the question is out here, is in here with us. And I need to speak to it so that the public which has been misinformed is re-informed with the truth. Yes. You've so done, you've I, done that sufficiently. And, and I have to end it and nail it. Honorable <laughs> Chair. Yes. You, I have you, to end it and lay, nail, nail it. Other than that, at the end of the day, if there is a snake you are killing, as our forefathers have told us, you must make sure that it is really dead. So you need to, the head needs to be cut off. So permit me to complete the cutting off of the head. Thank you. A lot you. of uh, cutting off of the head will be done in camera. On average, I'm cutting off the head that is in public. So the point is simple. It is a lie and it should not be tolerated because my colleagues are here. They know. And I'm saying three things and I'll end on that. That Every time there is any issue anywhere across the country that is of national importance, I, beyond the normal meetings we have all the time, at times thrice in a week, with some of them saying that, George, is too much because at times we just enter the office and you call us again on a matter. Beyond that, every single one, we have meetings on them. And all the ministers are there. And beyond that, we have the meetings, even including all hours, in the night, and at times, Saturdays, Sundays, because the matters of policing, the matters of security are arisen, and we can't wait. Because if you wait, the situation will get out of hand. And this is what we've been doing. And when 95 to 96% of the time, I give room for errors because nobody is perfect, and I'm not. I wait for all of them to speak, and they are here. And after that, they call me magnetic mind. I will then summarize all the position of each one of them, itemize them, and at times I ask them, how many should we have? How many itemizations do you think I'm going to have based on this meeting that we've had? And some of them, today we are tired, give us only 10. We are tired, give us 15 or go it or out. So at times we have the meeting discussions and it's like, George, are you doing Ghana movie? Are you going to do part one, two, and three in this summary? That is the way we do things. And one other thing, the second thing is to do with the fact that we consider ourselves as civil servant and every servant has a master and the masters of we, 
the police officers at the public, even including a weak year old child, that if something is happening to that weak old year old child, will go to his aid or her aid because that old year child is our master and we are the servant. And because I head the organization, I call myself the chief servant. And my colleagues are here. They know it. And being the chief servant, it means to me that I'm the least among them, even though I lead them. And this is how I demonstrate them. One, anytime we are moving outside, all of them goes, and I'm the last car to move. When we get to the destination, because of the teamwork spirit that we have, which was also demonstrated here when we arrived, we all are light, line up in succession, in command position, and we greet each other, and then we walk to where we're supposed to go to. When we get there, still being the chief servant, I wait to ensure, and they are here, that each and every one of them has gotten a chair to sit before all of us decide to sit in unison. And when we finish and go back, what I do, they go ahead of me to make sure that everybody is okay because I'm the chief servant. And when we are right back to the office or whatever our return place will be, we do the same, everybody get down, we greet each other, then we do debriefing to find out what exactly happened and what are the lessons that we can put. And they are here. So it is never true. Those people should stop disrespecting the public because it's just not fair. And the final one, as a chief servant, any time there is any private family thing associated with any of my commanders, I personally call them, urge them, offer any support that I need to offer, including my own brother. I was there for him 100% when his mother passed on, asking all questions about the development of the movement, about the funeral. And on the day of the funeral, Masha, all the commanders at Puma went and sympathized with him. And what I do some additionally to build that teamwork to make sure that all belong is the fact that I make sure each one of them, when I dress them, something that I call regimental diplomacy, even though I'm the head. I use please, thank you, brother and sister. And this is what has grew us together to be working the way we are working and to be protecting the good people of this country the way we are protecting. So it is a big lie if anybody comes here and makes this statement. And that person, I think, needs to apologize to the public. I thank you. Oh, oh. I seen North and Nayawa, so North by election also came up. So he was asked whether he caused the MPP to lose the by election at Ayawasu. And this is what he said. Um, one other thing which has been said about you is that when you policed the Asin of by election, you deployed Virtually the entire Puma membership, and so names like COP Yohunu, COP Awini, etc., etc., were mentioned. And the conclusion drawn is that those deployments were inimical to the electoral fortunes of the MPP in the Asin North by election. Sir, what is your reaction to this in terms of deployments? I mean, it's something that you may in your estimation, you are the IGP. If, if you think that if you share with us, it might compromise, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. 
you can decline to answer and then do that when, when we go in camera. But, but what is your reaction to this? On a which end, my answer will have no secret implications. It's a very simple thing, and I've said it time with that number. So my views and the views of my team and the commanders across the country are out there in the public already. But let me recall it by way of summary. The first point is this. When my colleagues and I took over, we realized that any time there's election, we were too late to operationalize our security arrangement and go about setting of National Election Security Task Force and all that, so close to the election. So there are always issues. So we committed ourselves to mainstreaming election security in all our I mean, police operations. So the first thing we did was to establish what we call Police Election Security Secretariat to be involved and streamline election security across the police so that when one election ends, the policing of the next election begins immediately. So this has been the template that my colleagues and I have been using in handling all subsequent elections since I assume office. And we've done that for the internal elections of all the political parties, and we have also used the same blueprint to handle all by elections. But this is the fundamental point. In the past, realize that all by elections, from Talensi through Chiriponi to Atiwa to Ayawaso and other places, normally do turn violence. So we decided as a team to interrogate the issue and find out what is causing it. And realized that we're making a mistake from the security point of view. Because when the political parties are treating that by-election as a national election in a single constituency, who we are treating it as a local election and then allowing, relaxing on the security and leaving it in the hands of the local policing authority. Why is we have everybody in Ghana at that location taking one, I mean, playing one, one part or the other in that election? So we resolved that if the political parties and the other stakeholders involved in these by-elections, if they decide to play it local, we, the police, will play it local. If they decide to play it district, we, the police, will play it district. That means that it's a fair match. If they decide to play it regional, we, the police, will play it regional. But if they decide to consider the election as a national one, then we, the police, the police into will be national. And I know this is also not tenable. And on a lighter side, if they decide to play it international, we also will do it international. So it is that that inform the deployment. Because the whole Ghana is at that constituency. So the whole police must also be at that constituency. And that is what has helped us. That's all the violations that has been done using this model has not resulted in any violence. And that's why I want to end it. I thank you, Honorable Chair. Okay, so the last question on my list was whether he has the original audio. You know, last week, um, about two weeks ago, when the, the three officers um, appeared before the committee, including Bugri and Abu, they all said um, um, the IGP is having the original video and the, um, and, on the, and the audio is doctored. So they asked IGP that, do you have the original audio? And are you the one who doctored the video, um, the audio? This is what he said. Exceptions out there. Uh, from the onset of this proceedings, the evidence adduced to the fact that the tape was meant for the president. And Chief Bugri Nabu went to the extent of telling the committee that he handed over the tape to the president. I was surprised when the witnesses mentioned that you have the original tape. What can you tell the committee about this? 
or what can you say about this? Thank you. Honorable Chair, another wide delegation. I don't know which of them, my brothers, who made that statement. Then I could probably ask the committee for him to go with me and tell me where I put it. Because technically, I don't have it. I don't know about it. So why should somebody come here and make such wild allegation without proving a bit of it? And then I'm asked to respond to it. And I would say, I beg of you. I beg of you. I don't have it. And I pray that maybe going forward, we should make sure when people make allegations, they should provide at least a shred of evidence before maybe an invitation is made for somebody to come and speak to it. But now, looking at the proceedings and the way I feel, it's like allegations have been made and then nobody provided a shred of evidence and the allegations are out there in the public and the allegations touches on my person even though it has nothing directly to do with me, especially with all the wild allegations they are made about the management of the police service which I do with my team, because without the way we, I can't make any pronouncement when I'm leading an organization. I don't use the word I. Then, I'm being asked to speak to allegations that have not been substantiated with a shred of evidence. Then, after I've answered the allegations, I'm being told that when there is a camera, in-camera meeting, those people who have evidence to now substantiate an allegation, then why couldn't we have waited for them to provide all those over allegations, even though belated? Evidence, even though belated. For myself and my counsel to look at them, and probably those that extend beyond me with my management board, whom I always work in concert with, to look at them, and then we can come and apply them appropriately. But now, allegation on substantiated. I'm speaking to it, and it's, my feeling is that that is the bit of it that will be for the public. But the real game has been put is what they now have again against me. And yet we have also been told that it's not the police service which is on trial here. Because we have police institutional structures to deal with anybody who has a complaint, which I know they don't have. Except that the shame that have come upon them. They are trying to twist it and divert attention. And we allow them to go on that fishing expedition, acting as octopuses in their quest to find something by whatever means to affect my person and my integrity. Which I think we need to look at this carefully because that is not fair. Having said that, I don't have anything. I don't know about it. And they should stop it. I thank you. Excuse me. Inspect okay, so the IGP will appear before the committee again on Wednesday. Um, on the Wednesday, 13 September 2023. Again, and I personally think um, this will offer him the opportunity to clear himself once again in all the allegations leveled against him okay and i think that the igp um has been one of the phenomenal appointees of this um, current government and then he has brought some changes in the police which has lifted the image of the ghana police service okay so let's all wait and see how this goes okay one man sir posted on facebook and said for the record, the MPP government has no intention of removing him unless he misconducts himself and breaches the police ethics. So those who are mischievously linking the leak tape to the corridors of the power to make look like the administration is mis uh, masterizing his removal um, due to the election of 2024 should come again. Elections are won at the polling stations and not in the pol police department. So the IGP can cannot so no IGP can influence election results in Ghana. Okay. That's him. 
one Emmanuel also posted. It's sad indeed. Everyone in the country knows how well you have worked for the peace of the country, Mr. IGP. Sometimes I ask myself if it's even worth sacrificing for this nation. Okay. One Randy also said, if a group of officers can plot the remover to remove their fellow officer, then they can plot and kill. This matter should be taken seriously. Okay, so that's the reason why the parliament is probing. Okay, so Joseph also posted, Dampar is very smart, intelligent and tactical guy. Every smart person would know what Oh, know that after watching his interview, after watching his interview, like how is how is he massaging the emotional pulse of Ghanaians? It makes him more of a victim and sympathetic. I like smart people. Okay, Samuel also posted, even this statement alone will make them feel ashamed, shameless people. Okay, he was referring to the three officers who plotted to remove Dampari. Okay, Daniel Otu also posted, I feel sorry for the two superintendents who are still in the service. They should accept their guilt, apologize to the IGP, ask for forgiveness and move on. Okay, you see, if also posted Dampari being too emotional is not my problem but my problem is why is the officers on the igp far right eyeing him like that okay that's what he saw another one also said the more i listen to him the more i respect i respect get the respect get greater and greater okay um Another one also said, projecting Christ in all he does. God bless IGP. Another one also said, hmm, my own friend accused me of stealing his file yesterday. He is trying his possible best to get proof to make his statement legit, but he continues to fail as he's trying to pull him down. How oh, does this got to do with a file? Well, hmm. another one also said, which will be the last, he said he plots to us the IGP. They have been made to believe that it's the only way they can break the eight. It's pathetic for a performing leader to be kicked out of politics. Okay, so this is where I will end. And then, God willing, on Wednesday, 13 September 2023, when um, IGP appeared before the committee again, whatever happens, I'll come again with a video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.